I'm trying to do the 365 project, and that is take a picture every day. I um, have been mostly successful. I may have missed one day. The problem is I'm not really sure because I've been very busy. I've been shooting tons, um, but I haven't been very organized after the fact. And so I thought I would take a few moments and walk through me finding some of my photos and use that as an excuse to show you some of the really nice uh, metadata searching tools that are built into Lightroom 4. So that's a long way of saying that this video is going to give you just some glimpses into the metadata search tools of Lightroom 4. So right now I am in a quick collection that I have created. It's down here on the left hand side. It is called the 365 collection. It's only 23 pictures in there, which is kind of sad. We are on the 68th day of the year, so there should be 68 pictures in there. Um, I don't have, uh, I don't, I'm not lacking from pictures to choose from. I got 9,777 pictures so far this year. Um, I think that does include a time lapse or two. Uh, yes, 100, 857 are time lapse. Uh, another Canon time. So we're, you know, we're talking almost 2,000 pictures are time lapse, but still quite a few. Right now, in this grid view in library, I have these set up to show me the dates, and I can see that I'm good from 1 1 all the way up to, it looks like I have a gap after 119 to 120. So I'm going to come up here. I have the library filter in grid mode. You do see this. And I'm going to go to metadata. And right now, mine is set up to show me date, camera, lens, and focal length. But I also want to get it off of the quick collection and have it be searching all photographs. So let's switch it to all photographs and now get back into our metadata. Okay, so all these columns are interchangeable um, and you can add additional ones or subtract. And they're basically a really easy way to filter through your library. Uh, here are all of your options, date, file type, keywords that have been applied to them. That's how I've made that quick collection, it, it, or that smart collection. Any image that I pick for my 365 project, I apply the keyword of 365 pick, that's over here, um, and it automatically gets added to that collection, that collection. It's very similar to the smart uh, collection in iTunes, I believe there was too. You could have like five stars, any that are five stars automatically end up there. There's, the limit is your imagination basically as to the criteria you apply. A lot of different information in here, but we're just going to keep it on date for right now. And oh, look, I lied. I don't have 9,777 pictures from this year. I do have um, 117 from last year. So already we're narrowing it down some. So uh, let's go into January. Here are 5,093 photos that I took in January. And where do we want to go? We wanted to go to the 20th. And so here we are on the 20th, and you are getting a glimpse into my messy library. And, um, you know, don't think less of me as a photographer because I got lots of pictures that aren't very good. And now what I need to do is I need to look through this day and find, this is when I was testing the 24s, uh, so a lot of similar shots, and find a picture that I like. Now, I could narrow it down a little bit more and say, well, here are all the cameras I used on just this day, because as soon as you choose one filter over here, the rest of these reflect that. So I can narrow it down and say, I want to see some only pictures that I took with my 5D Mark III. And then over here, I can say, show me only pictures. Oh, I missed this lens, the 24 to 70 F4 IS USM. Um, I know, don't uh, cry me a river, basically, because I do own the 7, 24 to 70 F2.8. Um, which in some respects is a better lens, but oh, it was light. It had that nice macro mode. Um, it had IS. It was, it's, and it's a thousand dollars cheaper. Um, very, very nice. So I'm just scrolling through my pictures that I took with that lens and that camera that day, and to see if there is one that I want to pick. You can see that there's lots. Oh, I was going to make that an animated GIF. Christina doing the yo-yo. I'll do that sometime. Ah. Right here. I like this. So I'm going to double click uh, some old signs. They're actually new signs in a store made to look old, I think. I don't think they're actually old. And um, I am going to go ahead and tag that 365 pick. And it now has that keyword. And if I pop back to the smart collection right here, 
We now can see that it says 24 uh, and go back to grid mode. And then that picture has shown up and it's shown up in order, which is nice because I have these set to sort by capture time. So let's return. Let's you know what we can do to keep from scrolling so much. There we go. Um, let's return to all photographs, go back to our metadata and move on to Monday. So lots more pictures to choose from on Monday. I, uh, let's see. Oh, I think I, I selected this already. And more test shots of 24 to 70 and things of that. So, um, what else did I, oh, I know what I wanted to show. So there's, as I said, there's lots of filtering options. One of those is you could focal length. This is a great way to say, if you're trying to figure out what the next lens you should buy is, and you've been using Lightroom for a while and you have a lot of pictures in here, you can say, let, let me see how many pictures am I taking at 50? How many pictures am I taking below 50? And so if you find that you're constantly, if you have the maybe the kit lens, the 18 to 55 right now, and you find yourself constantly at 18, you might enjoy a, a wider lens. If you constantly find yourself at 50, or if you got the 18 to 135, if you're zooming, then you say, well, maybe it is time that I buy a zoom lens. So this is some data to help you decide what lens um, you should look at next. But I like this a lot because I am a map nerd. GPS data, oh, none of these have coordinates. Um, I think there was one day that did, or maybe in February. But basically, if you have geolocated your photos as you um, are taking them or after the fact, you can then, okay, we got some in this batch in February with coordinates, and then I could even pull this out and say, what city? And then it takes a minute to update, but then we have three pictures taken in Boston, 62 in Brattleboro, 262 in Marlboro, and 3,936, it doesn't know where, in the um, month of February. So again, this is just all different ways for you to sort, organize, and find your photos. There's nothing more annoying than knowing you've taken a photo of something um, and not being able to find it later. So this can help you. Really what um, you should do, and, and I'm working towards this through my 365 project, um, is get keywords on those pictures uh, so that you know what they contain. And there are lots of programs. You put them online. Flickr will read those keywords, Smug Mug Zenfolio. And then you can say, show me every picture I've ever taken of my cat and there they'll all be. And that's a really nice way. If you think about continuing your photographic journey in two years, three years, and 10 years, you're gonna have quite a collection of images. And wouldn't it be nice to be able to find all of the ones that you're looking for very quickly, and both through Lightroom and tagging and keywording your pictures, you can do that. I'll have more Lightroom 4 videos coming. This was just kind of a quick tip about this. If you've got any questions about Lightroom 4, if you have a video request or a topic that you would like to see covered, please just leave a little comment down below or come on over to the Facebook page, which is also linked down below. Thanks so much for watching.